Sink. I think we're going. Yep. All right. Well, welcome out, everyone. We're glad that you're able to come and join with us at our Bite Size PD today. I'm Jonathan Stewart in Instructional Supports. And I'm Rebecca Bass, and I am the MTSS Specialist down in Student Services. And we are excited to talk to you today. Here, we're going to make sure we're <laughs> both seen about the Thrive Time curriculum that is being piloted right now. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. I have hit the record button. Our norms today are being committed and responsible and all those wonderful things. And also if uh, for any who may be joining us a little bit later, um, if you'll just mute your mic and leave a comment in the chat as these do tend to go fairly quickly. And so we really don't have for comments at the moment, but we will take comments and questions at the end. Those are our MTSS framework. And our learning intentions today is we will participate and understand, participants will understand the different parts of the Thrive Time curriculum. And they'll know when they're successful, if they can find and successfully teach a Thrive Time lesson and give feedback on the survey. So this is what our agenda will look like today. Um, first, I will go over um, accessing the lessons, a little bit of the history of how we ended up at this point, and then talk about the unit structure and developmental targets. And Becca will take us through what a lesson looks like and give some great and helpful tips. And then I'll talk a little bit at the end of the feedback survey that we need to be able to gather information um, to help our lesson development. So I thought it'd be very helpful to briefly talk about what the um, current timeline is for Thrive Time implementation. This started back in June when the unit structures and developmental targets were established. I'll talk about what that means in a little bit. And then um, there, over the summer, there were writing teams that got together and wrote lessons for each unit. And in August through December, those lessons were taken through multiple reviews and revisions um, through the community, district committees, et cetera. And that happened in the fall up through about December, early January. At that point, we then entered what we're calling a pilot phase. This is where lessons are going to be taught in schools and feedback is given. So this is the chance for the lessons which had not been in classrooms yet to get into classrooms, teachers to be able to teach them, see how um, the lessons actually work and function um, with students. And then as that feedback is gathered, adjustments are continually made, then the bo school board will consider um, in April and May to have final adoption of the curriculum. So where do I go to find the lessons? Um, there's two easy ways. Um, you can find it on the district website. The easiest way is it's canyonsdistrict.org slash thrive time. And I'll show you what that looks like here in a minute. Or if you go to the student services department, if you click on the social emotional supports menu, it is the first link there in thrive time. So let's go to the site. I have it preloaded already. Take you there. So you'll notice again, it's on the student services site and it's the first item in the menu for Thrive Time. Here's kind of a base, oh, oh, not a detour I wanted to take. And we're back. So this is a basic overview of what the Thrive Time curriculum um, is all about, what all the rules going through it, et cetera, et cetera. And keep in mind that this is a publicly available website. So this is also so our community can be able to see and preview what will be in the curriculum as well. So you'll notice that there, each, each of the um, grades has six units. Um, building resilience, setting goals for personal growth, making responsible decisions, understanding and serving our community, respecting myself and others, and resolving conflict. Those units will be the same for all grade levels. In kindergarten and first grade, um, they will be utilizing some resources from the Wonders curriculum. Otherwise, this is, it. This is um, lessons that were developed and written over the summer by um, independent people, teachers, counselors, administrators, lots of, lots of, lots of different hands were involved in this. And then there will be anywhere from six to eight or five to eight lessons per unit. It depends on the grade and, and a couple of different factors. And then you also find a digital citizenship lesson in there as well. So 
So that is how you actually access the curriculum. Now let's talk about where did this even come from? How do we choose the content and things that we did? Especially when it comes to social learning, there can be a lot of different resources and we've had different resources that we've used in our district in the past, <clears throat> second step, for example. Um, but in taking a step back and looking, what did we, how did we choose what we wanted to teach when? We looked at several state and district documents. Um, so the, there's the PCBL, which stands for Personal Competent Competency-Based Learning. They had a section in there to talk about social emotional learning, as well as information in the state's portrait of our graduate, our district strategic plan. And we looked at several documents and says, what are the kinds of competencies or things that we want our students to learn and know? And these were the six areas that we came up with, and those are the units that I showed you earlier. Um, so each area or unit also has standards in, in teaching terms, or we call them developmental targets since this is it, it, this is really something that you're developing. And they were informed by social development standards that we found in other states. And they're not broken into like per grade level, but they're bro bro broken into grade bands, K2, 3, 5, and 6, 8. So there's a link to the standards. Again, I have those pulled up already. So you can see what those standards look like. Um, and it kind of gives an outline of the lesson that Becca will talk about in a minute. But you'll see it has a couple of, of developmental targets that we want by the time in these grade levels and by the time a student leaves second grade, we're hoping that through teaching these lessons, um, they'll learn things like being able to manage strong emotions, identify a source of stress. If we go to a different unit, let's go to making responsible decisions, make a range of decisions at school, being able to demonstrate listening skills, um, being able to talk about body language and how that's used to communicate with others. So you can see that these are more specific skills and targets, and that will better help inform the lessons. And these are some of the areas that the lessons were designed around to say, okay, this lesson is supposed is designed to accomplish hitting this target or multiple targets. And that, and that is where the structure of why we're teaching what comes from. Now let's talk about how we're teaching it. And I will turn the time over to Becca. So all of your lesson plans are going to look very similar, almost exactly the same. We all use the same template. And so it'll look very, um, it'll look exactly like you see on your screen, um, slightly in hopefully, you know, the draft will um, end up going away. So the very beginning is we have those developmental targets. It's on every single one of your lesson plans. So if you wanna know, okay, what is the target? What are we supposed to be teaching? It's right there at the very top. And then the relevance is, you know, whoever wrote this lesson and then um, the editors in the student services and ISD departments, we kind of looked at, okay, why is this learning target important? Why is it important for student learning and for um, their ability to be successful in the classroom? And so there's that relevance. You don't have to read those to your students. That's more for your information. But if you want to share those with your students, you find that important, you can. Um, but that's more for you to just inform your instruction of the lesson. Then we have our, um, our next section, and that is kind of the learning intention and the success criteria. This should be look very familiar because this is what you as teachers do when you're creating any lesson. You have your learning intention. What is the purpose? Which should look very similar to what's above. And then the success criteria. How do you know that your students have learned this? Because they can do X, Y, and Z. Make sure you go looking at those. Utilize those. Um, refer back to them. So that way you know, okay, is this lesson really teaching this? And if it's not, we'll show you later where to give feedback. Um, but also you know, are you as a teacher being able to communicate this well and your students able to um, show you that they understand this new skill or this new topic? Then we have, um, I skipped a little bit, there's the portrait of a graduate and then there's some more, um, the links to the strategic plan. Those two pieces were put in there just so that way you can see that we didn't just come up with these willy-nilly. 
Um, they are connected to every part of what we believe in Canyon School District and what we want to have our, um, our students be able to graduate with the knowledge of. So I kind of skipped that section. That's kind of in the, the pinky um, section of it. So now we go into um, our essential vocabulary. This vocabulary is um, what we kind of went through. We went through every single lesson and we looked at what do the students need to know? So the lesson you're looking at right here is a fourth grade lesson. So what should fourth graders, what words do they need to know the answer? Like they need to know what it means. And so we have given you what word that is and then the definition. Um, and please use these definitions that we have um, provided for you because it's going to be across the board the same for that grade band. So the, um, the targets that Jonathan talked about earlier, we used the same definitions. So that way in second grade and in third grade, they're gonna be similar um, definitions. So they have been, they're kind of similar across the board. That way there's no confusion. The next one is materials. All of the materials that you're going to need is right here in this section. It'll be linked, it'll be connected to your lesson, whether that's a presentation, a worksheet, um, or they might even just say, hey, you need to have these physical objects. Um, and then there's always, in the next section, there's always a caveat. If you don't have these, this is something else you could do. But anything that um, is a pre-made handout, we've made for you. You don't have to take the time to make a worksheet. It's been made for you. Um, you may have to print it, um, but that's where, you know, get with your teacher teams and take turns making copies or um, see if there is, you know, someone wants to draw the short straw that week. Mm -hmm. um, just take turns. Yeah. And I, and I know when we had other curriculums, i.e. second step, that sometimes the, our SEL staff would assist in helping get the materials that you might need. So that's just another talk. Yes. Bribery works too. So, mm -hmm. hey, <laughs> um, ask them with a really nice like cookie. Um, but, you know, work together in getting these materials printed. There's not a ton that you have to, that you have to make yourself. It's mostly just a worksheet. A lot of them have presentations. Make sure you have that pulled up and you looked at it before you start the lesson. So that way you're prepared for the um, actual teaching of it. That way you're familiar with the materials. And then we have the teacher tips. This is the person who wrote this lesson said, hey, these are some really useful ideas. This is a way to maybe adapt it if you don't have this specific item mm -hmm. um, or just the ways to make this lesson move smoothly. The person who wrote this lesson gave you those tips. So is it mandatory that you read them? No, but it would be very useful. Don't skip it. Read it and say, oh, okay, yeah, that's what they mean by that. Or this is a really useful way to um, utilize these products or this presentation. Yeah, I think Becca and I both wrote lessons. Yeah. And this is where we would put the information where it's like, so you would know what we were thinking as we wrote the lesson. Mm -hmm. And so I think it'd be, it'd be very, very helpful. Yes, yeah, we definitely wrote quite a few. <laughs> yes. So now we're into the actual like lesson part. The first two sections of like the core of the, the lesson, um, this is gonna look really familiar to my elementary teachers. You guys are gonna be like, oh, I know how to do this. I do this every day. This is very morning meeting-ish, right? You have your greeting, you have your sharing time. Secondary people, you're gonna be like, what is this? What am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to have my students greet each other, what? This is a really great opportunity for all students in your classroom to feel like they are seen by everyone and heard. Not everyone, some people just like to melt in the background. This is a chance to, you know, greet them and have other students greet them and, and sometimes really meaningful ways and sometimes silly ways. Mm -hmm. It kind of just depends on the lesson, um, but you also know your class. If you read this greeting and you're like, oh, my fourth grade boys are going to go haywire with this. You can tweak it a little bit to fit your classroom. Mm -hmm. It's just a guide, right? And it and many of them will, are going to link into the core of the lesson itself. Um, so this is a really just great opportunity for your class to just feel very connected. It's not meant to take very long at all. 
So you're grading, you know, one to three minutes, depending on how large your class is. And you're sharing um, that could take longer, but you also can use a timer or whatever, especially if you have chatty Cathy's, you know, getting them to move on a little quicker when they're sharing. Now you have the actual like meat of the lesson. Um, this is what you're going to be learning. This is the core of the lesson. Um, each lesson may vary in the amount of time needed to complete this. Um, but most lesson plans have been from the very beginning to the very end, it should be about 20 minutes. Um, if it's shorter than that, um, I've given you later on, I'll talk to you about what you can do to add time to that if you want to. And if it is, um, if it's longer than that, you can also use kind of your teacher judgment. Do you have time to, to spend time doing this? Or could you just melt this into another day, into another lesson? Um, if your class is really engaged with this topic, most of the lesson plans have sentence frames for you to use, and they even have scripts. Um, so you don't have to be the expert. When I started writing these, I was not the expert in um, some of the topics that I learned. I became the expert really quickly doing lots of research, but I used, I realized teachers are going to be feeling like, I don't know how to teach a kid how to, you know, resolve conflict. That's a really hard thing, even for adults. So utilize the, the scripts and the, the sentence frames that are given here. So that way you, you don't feel like you're fumbling through the lesson. They're written that way. So that way the content can be delivered in a way that is really meaningful. Now we go down into the message. Now the message um, it can be shared at the beginning or as a wrap up to your lesson, kind of depends on what you want to do. They're written in ways that they could be one or the other. Um, it may be something that you as a teacher might want to pre-write on your board and maybe have it there all day long um, or even have it be something that all week and you refer back to it. Hey, remember when we learned this? So that way when you have maybe conflict was, you know, happen or strong emotions happen in your classroom, you could refer back to the message that you guys focused on during your Thrive Time lesson. Um, it's just a great little kind of a wrap up or a preview of, of what you're going to be learning and a great way to just kind of give students say, hey, we learned this. Let's go. Let's remember that we learned this. So some of the lessons are, you're going to feel like, oh, we don't have enough time for this. The more you get familiar with these lesson plans, the quicker they're going to go. You're going to feel more confident with them. Um, and so don't be stressed out if you're like, well, we didn't get to everything. That's okay. Especially in this beginning stages, no one is really great at teaching anything the first couple of times. So especially since you didn't write these lessons, just give yourself some grace and, and get through what you can and what your class can. Maybe your lesson, and you're like, wow, that was really short. I now have another, you know, 15 minutes in advisory class or in our homeroom or during morning meeting time. I have a lot more time than, and I don't really have anything planned. You can move on to the daily connections. These connections were designed to go throughout the week. If you wanted to refer back and add in, um, you know, connections to the lesson, but if you want to extend your, you know, current lesson that you're working on during that time, you could use this, right? It gives another practice and reinforcement activity. It gives a way to apply it. And then it gives a way for them to reflect on the lesson itself. So it is a way for you to just really look at what you're learning, what your students are learning, and then tie it in. You could even have it be um, something that they could do at home on Canvas, um, you know, however you want to utilize this, um, you can, but it is optional. This is not a required portion of the lesson. It's just additional resources. Mm -hmm. right. Yep. And now we're going to talk about the thing that you, where you get to say feedback, 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 because as we talked about the, the timeline, this is where hearing from you is critical. These lessons were thought to be great. They were reviewed by many people. But as you know, until you get into a classroom, you never know what's going to happen. And that's why we want to hear from you. 
to say, what can you tell us about how it went? Was it great? And we and a, we especially want to hear changes and suggestions, but we really do want to hear if things went well, because then we'll know, okay, that's a keeper. I want to use, I want to make sure that that lesson gets in the final version because that went really well. Um, but having that feedback is critical because that's how we're going to make the lessons even better. And again, this is your chance. I, I, <clears throat> I know large organizations tend to say, we want to hear from you. And then when you say something, it, it doesn't go anywhere. The input you're giving will directly impact what happens with these lessons. I can promise you that we've already gotten responses. They've been sent out to those that are still working on this project. So they, we definitely want to hear from you. And I also wanted to show you that the survey is not gonna take you very long. It's quick, it's designed to be quick, just so that there can be information that's relevant um, for those who will be further refining the curriculum. Um, so we know where to go with specific lessons or just in general. So this is the survey. This is what happens when you pull it up. I have a preloaded and you would identify yourself probably as a teacher in the district. It's going to ask you a couple things like which middle school or elementary school are you at? You'll just complete that. I will do, I will just do Willow Springs. What grade level is the lesson that you're reviewing? And we'll just say fifth grade, why not? And we will go with resolving conflicts. You click next, and then it asks, which, which lesson is it? Okay, we'll say lesson one, and then ask you if it's something you've already taught or you're just in the process of preparing to teach. So let's say you've taught a lesson, and you're like, hey, I wanna give some feedback. Maybe it's something you give feedback on in the PLC. You click next, you have several questions that ask about uh, preparation time. And you, you notice it's just a slider. Um, basically, what is the pacing like? How is the, it, do you have enough material? Is it user-friendly? Do you have material, whether were the materials working well for you or not? How engaged were the students? Um, did it work well for them or did you really have to pull some tricks to keep them going? Is it developmentally appropriate? In other words, is it, does it fit that grade um, level of, for, you know, in this case, like an 11, 12 year old? And then, you know, is it targeting skills that are important for your kids to learn? So are we hit, hitting the mark as far as teaching them the right things? So I'd hit next, you hit an overall quality um, and you, you might have additional thoughts. I thought this was a good lesson. And you'll notice once you hit that, that's it. So it really does take a minute, maybe two minutes, um, unless you have a lot of things to say about the lesson and you have the time and space to do that. And again, that feedback's very cool. And so please, please, please give us your feedback, teach the lessons, reach out to us or, any, or um, anyone in student services or instructional supports if you have any further questions or comments. And we look forward to um, to hearing from you. And we're glad that you were able to join us for this Bite Size PD today. Thank you. Thank you.